Gamecaster is a streaming application that allows you to cast on Twitch, Facebook Gaming, and YouTube. You simply install it, set your devices, pick a team, and click on stream. It's that easy. Oh, and it's completely free. If you're just starting, this is the best streaming application you will ever need. For those already streaming, you can use your overlays by adding just a single widget. This video is a full tutorial on how to set your devices, choose your team, create scenes, add widgets, and set hotkeys. It will teach you how to start streaming in just minutes after you install the application. Now, let's begin with the installation. Open your browser and type gamecaster.com. Have a look at all the features, and when you're ready, click Download. Save the file to your preferred location, and I strongly suggest you to join their Discord server so you'll be able to see old announcements about new features and improvements, and also in case you have an issue and didn't find the answer at help.gamecast.com, you can post on any of the individual help desk channels or open directly a ticket for more technical issue. Install the file as any other application on your computer. Open Gamecaster and select your preferred language from the drop-down menu. Create a new account or enter with an existing one you intend to stream to. If you're going to use it for recording purposes only, select whichever account you prefer. Both ways, your account will save your overlays and scenes and also your season progress. Something very cool we're going to take a look later on. Once you're logged in in your own studio, here you do everything and see everything while you stream or record. You have your team scenes, your stream events like subscribers, followers, tips. You have your stream chat directly from your streaming account. And yes, you can use all your admin commands in here. Now, down there are four options you can set from your settings panel, but they are also the most used, and this is the fastest way to monitor them and react during streaming or recording. I'm going to show you how to make shortcuts for each of them very easily once we get to the settings. Now, let's have a look at each button. This is the main source. Choose from any game, your display, or any application you have opened in your computer. Camera source. Select your camera and you'll have a preview here and also a delay option. System sound is where you quickly mute and unmute or you go to settings directly to correct something. Microphone. Same thing. Mute and mute and open settings directly. This icon shows which platform you're assigning with. By clicking it, you go directly to your account settings. Next is the stream button. Click start and stop streaming. And recording button, same thing. Remember, all these buttons can be set with shortcuts or hotkeys, so you don't need to come back here and click it manually. This is very useful, especially when you're using a single monitor for streaming or recording. Let's go to the settings options. Click on devices and select microphone. Choose the one you prefer from the drop down menu. Define how loud your mic is by testing while you're talking and make sure you are in the optimal green area here. If it's too loud, maybe you should take the microphone further until you reach the optimal area. And the opposite, if your microphone is too quiet, Use the Gain option and boost the volume range of your microphone. One very important option for gamers is noise suppression. This will reduce the noise of your keyboard and mouse while you're gaming and also if you have any external noise coming from your PC, for instance. Delay is the amount of time before your microphone will be heard. Input sensitivity. This is the minimum level after your microphone will be transmitted. Your voice may not be heard if you set a higher decibel settings, especially if you talk quietly. 
The compressor option is essential if you're playing games, sometimes overreact and scream or laugh very loud, and you don't want your viewers to experience that. System sound. Choose the audio device from which your main sound comes from and test it the same way as your microphone with being in the optimal level. Again, you can boost the volume range if it's too quiet. Camera source. Select your camera from the menu and you will see a preview right here. If you want to stream without your background to be visible, you can enable the chroma key option from your scene editor. If you don't have a green screen, here is a solution for you. XSplit VCam will remove or blur your background with no need of green screen. Click here or see the link down in the description. Let's move to the capture card. Select your capture card from the menu and wait for the preview to appear. Then choose your capture card audio and if needed, adjust the volume. You can listen to a preview of your audio and also set a delay for it and for the video signal. Now let's have a look at the streaming options. First thing you see is your streaming account right here and the option to choose from automatic or custom settings. If you're new to streaming, I recommend leaving this to automatic. When you're ready to stream, close the window, click the stream button, then optimize stream and Gamecaster will automatically choose the best streaming options for you, like the resolution, the bitrate, the codec, and the server. Now, one thing I suggest is to go back to the streaming settings and to put all these options manually, except for the server. Although Gamecaster will select the best server for you, I suggest doing a few stream tests with different servers just to make sure you have the best connection. Because sometimes the fastest ping does not mean the best connection. For instance, automatically Amsterdam is the best option for me, but Vienna is the closest to my location. And although the ping is higher, the connection is better. So make sure to have a few tests before start streaming. Let's go back to the streaming settings. Switch to custom and choose your server, the resolution, the codec, codec per set. For me, there is no option. The frames per second and the bitrate. For me, it's constant and I set it to 3000. Stream delay. Delay your stream to be sent. This is for those participating in tourneys who need to have a minute or five to delay their stream. This is kind of protection from stream sniping. Recording locally. If you enable this option, your stream will be recorded on your computer. So you don't have to download the VODs from Twitch, for instance. And you can split the recording by size or by minutes. Let's move to recording options. Settings here are pretty similar. Best will be to set your preferences with the custom option since you don't have to send anything to any server. Set your resolution, the codec, the codec preset for you. There might be different settings here and set your frames. The quality is where you need to do some testings again. Split recording if you want your recordings to be split on different files by file size or by duration. And finally, the multi-track audio. If you enable this option, your microphone and system audio will be split in two tracks. This way you can remove your microphone during editing. A very useful option is in-game hood. It allows you to visually control and manage your stream from inside your game 
which is life-saving for those having one monitor only. By default, the hotkey is Control plus Tab, but you can change that very easily. Enable this option and let's see how it works. Open your game and click Control plus Tab to enter the in-game hood. Now you see your stream chat, events and info, but to be able to see them while you play, you have to pin them. Click on Pinned Widgets, then Add Widgets, and choose the one you like. Now click Done, and you can place the widget absolutely anywhere on your screen. From the settings, change the text size, and the background opacity. If you leave it to 100%, you won't be able to see what's behind the widget, so you better lower the opacity or set it to zero. Then choose how long to see the widget. Go back, return to your game, and you have your stream chat directly over your game. If you want to make any additional changes or to add another widget, use the shortcut and enter the in-game hood again. Talking about shortcuts, let me show you how to set them. Hotkeys give you complete control over your broadcast. You can easily start and end your stream, mute and unmute sounds, and the most important, you can switch scenes without even minimizing your game or whatever you're doing, just like having a stream deck. First option is in-game HUD. If you don't like the default key, change it. Studio. Set a hotkey for each option like start or end the stream, pause or resume recording, the audio mute, unmute, microphone or system sound, and the scenes. Think of this as you are using a stream deck for each scene like stream is starting, stream ended, talking to your chat, be right back. For each of them, you select a key and easily change them without exiting your game or browser. You can't see it here because it's on my main streaming account, but I set all the keys and then I labeled the keyboard with paper sticky notes so I don't get confused during the stream. I mainly used the insert, home, page up, page on buttons, and even part of my numpad, so I don't have to click a combination of two or more keys. And a tip, don't set keys you're using for gaming. This will only mess up your stream. Advanced options. Here I only enabled show mouse during stream or recording, and the rest of the options leave as they are. For more specific guidance, if you have any issues, you can post on Gamecasters Discord. You can find the link below the video. Tipping is very important if you intend to let viewers tip your channel. Type in your real username, like your Twitch name, and then fill your PayPal email. A tipping page with a link will be created just for you, and Gamecaster will not take any commission for that. The money is yours. You can have a look at your page and copy the link and paste it in your panel or in your chat if you have a specific command for that. By connecting your accounts, you can stream or pull in-stream events. You can even stream on multiple platforms at the same time. You can show your viewers what music you're listening by connecting your Spotify account and adding a widget within your scenes. Now that we have set everything for streaming and recording, let's head to the studio and choose our first team. By default, you have a team which is empty. That means that you have to build it by adding different scenes and widgets one by one. This is time consuming and also confusing if you are just starting. That's why Gamecaster has a wide variety of teams created just for you and they are completely free. Now click on Teams where you can choose by formats like animated or static, by genres like battle royale or FPS. And for me, the most important, you can choose by color.
Let's browse through first person and select the team to see what it looks like. Each team includes scenes like start, main, and intermission. They're completely set with all you need. You have your camera set, you have your alerts, you have intermission with your camera and game. Before adding the team, you have the option to select which scenes to include. I recommend leaving all of them. And these are all the colors you can pick for your team. But we'll see how that works after we add the team to our studio. Now, the team is important and ready to use. Switching teams is done from here. This is the empty team from the beginning. This is our new team. For creating new teams, simply click the plus sign, set a name, an icon, and create it. Again, it's empty. You either add a scenes by creating your own or choose from a team like we did before. Let's go back and remove that one. Right click to edit, duplicate or delete. We delete it. Very simple. You can add as many teams as you like and switch between them from here. From our preview window, we have the option to edit the active scene and to disable the preview if it's too much for your processor. All the options for each scenes are right here. These are all the scenes of your team and we can create as many as we want. First option is to edit, then rename. Duplicate, very useful because once you set your alerts with sounds and position, you simply duplicate the scene so you don't have to do all these settings again. Next option is delete and then refresh. Also with right click, you have all these options. Each scene can be set separately according to your needs. Let's start editing our scene. It may seem confusing and scary right now, but it's very easy to navigate once you know what you're looking at. This is the preview of our scene. Everything we change, we see it here. Also, we can quickly select widgets and move them around. On the left side are all the widgets or the elements of the scene. If a widget has more than one element, it will be grouped in a folder or a group, like we have tip alerts, follower alerts, and so on. They are all in the group alerts, but there are different type of alerts, and that's why they have their own group or a folder. Each of them has its own elements that we can move, change, hide, or delete. You don't need alerts. You can simply hide them. You don't need a specific alert. Hide it. You can also hide widgets from the preview window so you don't get confused which element you're working with. At the right side are the settings for the selected widget. Like the tip alert, we can now see all the settings for this alert here. Select an element of a widget and see their settings individually. What you should edit here is the alerts audio and enabling text-to-speech option. For the audio, click and if you want, upload your own or browse from the ready ones from Gamecaster. You can reduce the volume if you want. There are many options here, but if you are new to streaming and scenes and widgets, I suggest you don't change specific things like fonts and colors. 
Not because you can't, but because the scene is made to be a whole with the team. And if you change any font or color or on any specific widget, but leave the rest as it is, it may not look very well afterwards. Now remember what I said about the colors. Click outside the editor. On the right, you have scene properties. Here are the colors of the team. Selecting one will change the appearance of the scene. You can pick any color you like, but remember to match it with the rest of your scenes. Here is the scene background. You can upload your own, but if you delete it and don't replace it with something, viewers will see black screen, so leave the theme one or change it with your own. At this point, you're ready to start streaming. All you have to do is to save the changes, close the window, and click the stream button. If you think there's more you can do with your scene, click edit scene, and let's have a look at all the widgets one by one. Click on Add Widgets. And first thing to remember, any widget can be added. Then it will appear on the left. Select it, and its settings will appear on the right. Very simple. Let's see them one by one. You can add text. You can add an image. You can also add an icon. Uh, it's like the icon on the social bar, but let's add it. On the right from the menu, you can choose from all the icons for any service you can think of. Video. Embed a video anywhere on the scene. Web page is the same as adding a URL with an overlay from a service like Stream Elements, for instance. Simply add it, type the resolution or drag the sides till they fill the whole screen, the resolution you're working with. Then delete the URL and paste the one with your overlay. This way you don't have to start from scratch or moving to a new team and going through your settings again progress bar, create one for any occasion. A group, you can group elements together in a separate folder and you can rename them as you like, same as the alerts. Audio, upload your own or choose from the existing ones. Custom widget, this is where you can create or edit your widget in HTML, Java or CSS. From sources, you can add windows like the main source, like 16 by 9 or 4 by 3. And the same goes with the camera source, not the frame, but only the camera source. Alerts. They're all set. You have all the variations you can choose from. Labels, like recent followers, subscriber, again, they can be 4x3 or 16x9 resolution. So you can put them anywhere. Counters, you can add for the followers, subscribers, and so on. The same thing. Goals, place any type of goal you like. trains. Let's place a subscriber train so you can put it below the camera or above. It doesn't matter. We can add another one like for instance the follower ones. And we can put it above the camera. It's up to you. Essentials. You can put a timer like on the stream is starting scene. Set the minutes so the viewer will know when you start the stream. 
Then there is a slideshow option, social promotion, very, very useful. This will remind your viewers to subscribe to any social media you have. Let's put one like, um, for instance, YouTube. Rescale it. Or put the width, the width and the height manually. You can rotate it. And set the time until it loops again. You can also change the graphic. Next one is chat. Let's add a chat. You can move it and place it wherever you want. You can resize it. And if you like, you can move the camera, for instance. And then the name tag. And place the chat below. Again, resize it. And then you have the rest of your screen for your um, for your game or anything you work with. Then you can change the theme. Also the font size, the font itself, and the fade out delay in seconds. Next is event list. Many people like this widget. Stream cup. Choose any, place it anywhere on the screen, select the event that triggers the animation. You can also change the size or you can move it. Ticker is the same as the events. Let's put one. We can make the roll bigger. You can change the theme and again to select the events. The rest of the options are here. We have transition also. About the theme, again, here is very important. You can choose from 16 by 9 or four by three. And here you have a name label. We saw it over the camera. The social media, which is the bar you can place top or on the bottom of your screen. And then you have the camera source, but this time this source comes with the frame. So we can choose from four by three or 16 by nine. This is very useful for people who have still cameras, 4x3, like me, for instance. Then you can add the name again with the same resolution by 4x3. And if you do not need the 16x9, you can simply hide it. And the name tag also. Or if you don't need it at all, you can delete that. Next widget is Spotify. Remember where we set accounts. If you connect your Spotify account with this widget, viewers will be able to see what kind of music you are listening, even if they cannot hear it as the situation right now with Twitch. But the Streamlabs is the same like web page, but this time this is only for the Streamlabs users. If you are Stream Elements users, use the web page one. If you added all you need for this scene, click on Save. And check if the alerts are working by clicking on the Test button. Then check every single alert one by one to see if everything is working like the sound and the animation.
If you're happy, click on save again, if you haven't before, then close the window and you're ready to stream. Now I want to show you something. Look at this transition. It's cool, isn't it? I got it for free just for using Gamecaster for my streams. Click on achievements and you'll see this. Welcome to the season pass. Be rewarded for doing the things you love. Complete achievements and daily goals to unlock stream assets and to be in a chance of winning some great prizes. What are the prizes? Well, a gaming laptop, Elgato Waves, Logitech cameras, Voice Mod Pro, lifetime subscription, Elgato Stream Decks, the Bulwark Game Codes, and 10,000 instantly redeemable XSplit VCAM licenses. Let's see the season pass. These are all the tiers you can unlock. For each tier unlocked, you get rewards. By now, I have unlocked a team, a ticket for Logitech webcam, and panels like the one you connect your social account on Twitch. You earn experience for different actions like earn a Twitch follower while you're live, 10 experience. For my next level, I need 20 experience. You know, easy. All the experience is very easily achievable. And then you unlock all the cool prizes from the season pass. Thank you.